Hello and welcome to Library Salad. Today's episode is Should You or Shouldn't You? Brought to you by the Monroeville Public Library in Pennsylvania. Hi, I'm Alice and we are going to answer some very important questions um, and toss things around because this is Library Salad. First up, should you or shouldn't you brush before you floss? Big question. Now, the answer to that is that flossing comes first because by flossing, you're going to get the particles out between your teeth so that the toothbrush can do a better job after that. Most people actually do brush first because of the fact that not so much in a routine for flossing, so sometimes flossing comes as an afterthought. Question on top of a question. Should you use full waxed floss or unwaxed floss? Hmm. I think that's more of a person's preference. I myself prefer the wax. It just makes sense to me because it goes through the teeth easier. Maybe that's just because I'm getting old. I don't know. What else can you You're not you getting do? old, sweetie. So sweet. Your birthday's coming up soon, so you know what that means. Big presents. Big presents. All right, so <laughs> floss can also be used for baking cakes. You may be perplexed just as rich as right now, but actually, if you have unwaxed floss, not mint flavored, when some uh, different recipes call for with a layer cake, splitting the cake so that a two layer cake becomes a four layer cake. Do the math. With this, okay, all you have to do is to take a piece, just start to work it through, holding like this, and give a little over here, there, so that when you come through, you can see where the marks are and you can do it easily through like that, dividing the cake. It's easier than a knife, I am telling you from experience. I don't make all this stuff up, I make some of it well, You do have to take it out of the pan first, right? That would be correct, yes. I might have some of you when people would know that, but hey, they also you know, put things on cans like some straight, I'm not even gonna go there, okay. Anywho, next question. Should you or should you not refrigerate a hard boiled egg? I always feel like there should be music again. Anyway, hard boiled eggs. Rich and I had a discussion earlier about the fact that I said to him, with Easter coming up, our families both made hard boiled eggs. And I said to him, so, when you made Easter eggs a couple days before Easter, then they were peeled in the Easter basket, and then they were there for a time before everybody had egg salad. I said, did you refrigerate them? He said, no, we had them out for weeks. My family did the same thing back in the day. All right, but the real thing you should do is hard boiled eggs need to be refrigerated. Even when you're finished hard boiling them, they need to be back in the refrigerator for no more than two hours. Like you make it two hours, refrigerate it. And you might be saying also, why? If regular eggs can stay in for a couple of weeks, what makes a hard boiled egg different? Because hard boiled can only stay in the refrigerator for about one week. The science to it, science to it is that the boiling compromises the actual shell. The bacteria will get in. So that's why it needs refrigeration. Speaking of, should you or should you refrigerate something? This has been an age old question. Butter, does it get refrigerated or can it stay at room temperature? Answer is room temperature is fine. Butter can even stay at room temperature for months. I would recommend, we've got summer coming up, not during the, what they call the dog days of summer, do you want to leave this around? I mean, that 
that point, you may want to put in sweet potato. But in general, it can actually stay out for that long. I would recommend if you have a good sale, put it in the freezer. Speaking of food, we're on a, a little path and we've gone egg, we've gone butter, <gasps> avocado. So many people love avocados. I myself have a fairly regularly too, but most time you may not use the whole avocado. So when you put it in the refrigerator, yes, you need to put it in the refrigerator after it's been cut. When you put it in the refrigerator, and it comes out, it's usually a little brown on the top. Should you or should you not still eat it? You can still eat it. Now you may want to take off the brown a little bit. Um, it's very bitter, but everything underneath is perfectly fine to eat. Now there's also a recommendation to make it a little less brown. If you put a um, little coating of lemon juice on it, and then put it in either wrapped with um, plastic wrap or whatever, like a Ziploc, that it will keep it even better. Maybe not so, because this week, day two, when I took it out, day one I had it fresh, day two I took it out of the refrigerator after I put a little lemon juice. I didn't use a fresh lemon, but I used a little concentrate thing, maybe that was the difference. When I used that and still put it in a Ziploc, it was more brown than when I didn't put it with lemon juice. I don't know. Try that out. Let me know how that one goes. Next up, still on the food thing, okay? Oh, well, crock pots. I wasn't going to bring out the whole cup of crock pot. Let's be serious, people. Okay, this is the top to a crock pot. So we're going to talk about crock pots and should you? or should you not put frozen meat into a crock pot as part of a recipe? Answer is that sort of depends. Now, if it's a very thin piece or small pieces, that may work. But if it's a three to four pound piece of frozen meat going into the crock pot, that people is a problem because it's going to take it a long time to get up to the cooking temperature that you want to really start at. All right, there's a little danger zone of a certain low temperature, or in this case, a high temperature, that you should be cooking the meat at. So, large piece of meat frozen, no. Give your recipe an extra day, let it just defrost more, and then try it the next day. And multitasking. A lot of people love, they say they love to multitask. They're even very proud that they multitask. Um, but should you or should you not multitask? They're saying the fact that it's really not as efficient and as effective as you think. Multitasking, by definition, isn't really doing more than one thing at a time. It's actually transferring your mind from one thing to the next and almost going back and forth. And that can take longer than just single tasking. So now single tasking has become the new multitasking. One last thing. This is one of the biggest debates out there in a should I or shouldn't I? Roll of toilet paper, people. You should use it. Okay, not the question. Mm. The question is, should it hang over when it's on the roll? Or should it hang under? 70% of people do hang it over and they would be correct because of the fact that when it's hanging over it's e more easy to actually take it off by going under your hand is hitting um, either a wall or someplace around it and that is why it needs to go over now 
maybe you're saying, I still don't think that's the way it's going to be. And frankly, it's your house. Do it the way you want. But a gentleman by the name of S. Wheeler, 1891, got the patent for toilet paper. And we have pictures. See this in the patent? How is the toilet paper displayed? It's going over. Let's just put that one to rest. All right, so we have discussed all of these, a lot of food included, and I hope that you've enjoyed that, and we will see you next week.